Now let's get initial reaction to the recording and the documents uh, from MPs. Conservative Aaron O'Toole joins us from Toronto. And in Ottawa, we have Liberal Mark Miller and Nathan Cullen for the NDP here in studio. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, I'll go to you first. This is all happening very quickly, and we haven't had a whole lot of time to absorb this, but what is your initial reaction to this phone call recording? Well, it's extraordinary, Glenn. It, it certainly shows us why the Trudeau government has been working around the clock the last few weeks to block uh, Ms. Wilson-Raybould from telling the full story to be a being able to rebut some of the evidence from the key Trudeau figures. Certainly, it suggests that the Prime Minister and his key figures have, have uh, not been truthful to, to Parliament. They've been shutting down the committee process. They're showing an absolute contempt for Parliament. They're besmirching the name of Ms. Wilson-Raybould. We'll probably hear uh, the Liberal attacks here on the program. Um, I think it's getting into a point where there's no confidence in the Prime Minister, and we're going to have to act in that regard. Uh, Mr. Cullen, uh, the government has maintained all along that these conversations were appropriate. There was nothing wrong said that this is part of the process, that cabinet ministers talk amongst themselves about policy. How does this recording change your view of that, if at all? Well, I think it confirms a number of things that we heard from Ms. Wilson-Raybould at that committee. She had very specific quotes. She had an exact reasoning for her logic in terms of what the law said. And what struck me a couple of things. One is we need a public inquiry. This constant delay and stall at the Justice Committee is not going to get to the truth that we need of this matter. The secondly, that she actually several times in that audio recording, if you listen to the whole thing, which I have, she says, I'm trying to protect the prime minister. Yeah, I'm that's, trying to, I'm, that's an interesting point. It, like she, she's she's protect, actually playing defense here, does, it sounds does, like. She says several times, does he understand what he's asking for? Because what they're asking for, what Wernick is asking for in these audio tapes and these text messages of conversations with Gerald Butts and all these senior people around Trudeau, what Trudeau mm -hmm. was asking for was political interference in a criminal proceeding. Mm -hmm. That to overrule the independent... Uh, uh, department that makes decisions as to who goes to trial and how. And they're saying, interfere. And she says, no. And they keep the pressure on. She, she tells them to stop. She says, this is inappropriate. I'm mm -hmm. trying to protect the prime minister here mm -hmm. and governance. And they continue on. And then at the very end of the call, if you listen right to the end, she says, because he keeps saying the prime minister is determined. And she says, I know he usually gets what he wants. Mm -hmm. Something to that effect. I have the quote not exactly right. right. Mr. Wernick doesn't contradict that mm -hmm. and she says I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop which dropped a month and a bit later when she was removed as attorney general right for, for whatever reason we don't we're not we're not 100% well, sure yet still but it's clear the reason so right? uh, yeah. like <laughs> several months of pressure she yeah. re she resists the pressure she, he says the prime minister is in a determined state of mind right and then a month later she's fired when she doesn't give in to that pressure he said one yeah. way or uh, another you have to be pretty thick not to connect it right okay but mr miller uh, i understand you haven't heard the entire audio recording Correct. so in, in fairness though from what you've heard of that excerpt uh, is there anything to in there to support her her claim that she was subject to veiled threats, uh, and is there anything also in there that contradicts what so far the government defense has been, that this was all part and parcel of a normal way of doing business? Uh, well, look, Glenn, it shouldn't escape your listeners that uh, my colleagues have already teed up the dots before they heard this layer of evidence. But right. uh, what I have been able to tease out at first glance is, is that I don't see any particularly new evidence. I, I, I see the salacious nature of a, of a recording, uh, as well as, as, as some clarifications of the facts that were mm. provided by Ms. Wilson-Raybould. Uh, what it does confirm is that you, at the end of the day, you have two sides who profoundly believe that they did their respective jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, both confirm that, that nothing illegal has occurred. So uh, we're, we're in a situation where uh, you've, got, you've got a lot of political spin. The committee has had ample opportunity to hear four hours of testimony from Whisper Wilson mm. Raybould, mm. equivalent amounts of time from what we qualify as the other side, but you know, the, both sides presenting evidence. Uh, Evidence and, and testimony has been compelling, mm -hmm. uh, but as as Miss Wilson Rabel herself says, uh, she doesn't believe that the process, the formal process, should be should be carried forward anymore. So uh, I, I would I would leave it at that. Um, but again, uh, Canadians will make up their minds about what did this. She say the process shouldn't continue. She yeah. has to come back to the committee. Page nineteen. And and page yes, 19. but it, but in but she has page, she page has nineteen. To, excuse me. Hold on paragraph. a second. Uh, 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 you, you, you can you can say what you'd like here. Miss Wilson well, Rabel wrote, wrote to the Justice Committee and said, "I'd like to, there's more that I need to say." Right. And the right. Liberals on the Justice Committee said no. Right. Then we went to the Ethics Committee to try to offer over an opportunity there for my Liberal colleagues to allow full testimony. Yeah. They said no. Mr. Wernick went in front of committee and said the following, yeah. that SNC never threatened 
to move, that SNC was not putting that on the table. In this phone call, I just heard Mr. Warnick's voice say, SNC, from all of our information, has told us that they're threatening to move. Then we had the Prime Minister say they were going to get rid of all the jobs. Then the head of SNC comes forward and says, I never told the Prime Minister or his senior officials yeah, that. Yeah, but the company, the, company, uh, the company did release a clarification oh on that. Uh, that <laughs> yeah, th 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 said, in fact, that, and there were apparently documents to support forgive that. Me, that for, forgive Canadians for saying, right. what the hell's going on? Yeah. What is going on it's when you have a Prime yeah. Minister and his yeah. Senior officials yeah. pressuring the, the independent attorney general to do something that yeah. she clearly says that the, the law does not direct her to do. They right. said, do it anyways. Yeah. Now, we're still uh, processing, obviously, the content of this and, and, and comparing it against a previous testimony and that sort of thing. That's going to take uh, mm. a couple hours and, and uh, maybe days. Uh, but but uh, Aaron O'Toole, I want to talk to you about um, the form that this takes. A, a cabinet minister who admits that it's inappropriate for her to do this, to go in and make a covert recording of her conversation with the highest ranking public servant in the country and now releasing this what, what what's what's your reaction to that is this is this case compelling enough that she should do that and and possibly break uh well i don't know if it's a, if it's a break of solicitor client privilege but there'll be, there'll be debates about that for sure uh, in in coming hours and days but well, what do you think of, of i mean people making those covert recordings of of high level conversations well, look, Mr. Wernick was not her client, so that, that's a ruse that the Liberals are putting out there. There's been a steady and uh, systemic uh, character assassination of Jody Wilson-Raybould by the Liberals, by former Liberals like Sheila Copps, Don Johnson, who sat in Trudeau's father's cabinet, mm -hmm. suggesting she didn't understand what the words national economic interest uh, mm -hmm. uh, meant, mm -hmm. suggesting she needed a Supreme Court of Canada opinion to try and basically suggest to Ms. Wilson-Raybould that her legal judgment wasn't sound. It, it's horrific for someone who preached sunny ways and suggested that he was going to empower his cabinet min, uh, ministers. This showed a, a very concerning trend with the Trudeau government who lied to Canadians, I think, with respect to this scandal. Remember, Mr. Wernick said the story in the Globe and Mail that broke this entire scandal was not true. Well, here on the recording, even someone with no legal training can hear that every time Mr. Wernick responded to Jody Wilson-Raybould on the tape, it was yes, but, yes, but. The Prime Minister's in that type of mood. He's going to get it done one way or another. The mm -hmm. emails to mm -hmm. and texts her chief of staff received, she was, her chief of staff was actually intimidated by Jerry Butts, who said to her directly, there will be interference in this case. So this is a, a travesty, Glenn. In fact, uh, it shows a contempt for Parliament. The legislative process has been interrupted in terms of committee work. Uh, clearly, the, the Attorney General of Canada was both intimidated by the Prime Minister's <laughs> team. I think that might be the next step. Mark seems to think there's nothing illegal but, here. This is unconstitutional and a violation of the Parliament of Canada Act, and I think the Prime Minister's in contempt. Well, we'll just respond to, to, to Mr. Miller's comments that there doesn't seem to be anything illegal done. In fact, the Attorney General herself at committee said she didn't think anything illegal was done. What is it about the recordings that you've heard that suggests that Mr. Warnick was wrong, that, that these conversations, while they may have been talking to her a lot about this, transgressed from the kind of conversations you have in, in caucus all the time to the point where it was either illegal or inappropriate? Well, there's the Constitution itself, which separates the uh, executive branch, legislative, and judicial. So there's constitutional problems here when the executive branch is actually pressuring and interfering in a prosecution. Uh, the Parliament of Canada Act, mm -hmm. I think, has also been violated uh, in terms of illegalities around this. The Shawcross doctrine, doctrine demonstrates where the line is. They drove over the line, Glenn, in September, and here you have Jody Wilson-Raybould essentially pleading with the clerk. I'm trying to protect the prime minister. Has anyone explained to him what this means? It's clear. This is where we see uh, Mr. Trudeau's arrogance coming out from time to time, where he wants his way. Mm. As, the, as the clerk said, he's in one of those moods. So the sunny ways mm. prime minister doesn't act that way behind closed doors, and that's what the tape showed us today. Yeah, I'm going to go to Mark here. You now have a caucus colleague who was taping uh, at least one conversation, which she may have taped. Well, she says she, this is the only time she's ever done this, so we take her at her word on that. But are you comfortable sitting in caucus with somebody who is doing that and now releasing that tape? 
Well, look, look. first, I've had more heated conversations with the Prime Minister in, as a caucus, simple caucus member. Um, certainly other caucus members have had it. Uh, I, the, the, the tone and nature of this interaction did not seem uh, as heavy as, as has been purported to be. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps Mr. O'Toole, when he was uh, in government, wasn't didn't feel liberty to have those discussions with Mr. Harper. But I know that yeah. Mr. Trudeau is, is is very open to these conversations and, 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 and enjoys them and enjoys market. the back and forth. And that's what we expect from a prime minister that is the leader of a, of a G7 country. Mm -hmm. As to the as to the tape, look, I, I do find it just distressing that a colleague would go to to lengths to tape uh, a conversation with uh, what is effectively Canada's highest bureaucrat. And not and not just. Um, and not just make the tape, but to release it now. Well, look, she was responding to, uh, to uh, I won't impute her motive, she was responding to a request from Mr. Rankin, and she probably thought that it was salient to, 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 her, to the request. I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt to that, but certainly, for, if, if this were about me, there would be a trust issue. Uh, and clearly, this is something that I'm going to have discussions with with her in caucus. And, you, you, you'll uh, and have I a caucus expect, meeting next next week, and I would expect uh, caucus mates to also address that as well. You expect a vote at caucus about whether she can stay in caucus next week. What happens in caucus uh, will remain for the purposes. Would you like to see a vote in caucus next week? Westminster system in caucus. Would you like to see a vote in caucus next week? Glenn, I'm going to reserve judgment for my caucus mates. It would be premature for, and indeed inappropriate for me to discuss this on a national news. Re news real network. quick, thirty seconds, Nathan. What happens next now? Uh, I'd hope to see if, if they if they want to actually see the end of this at some point. Mm -hmm. The Liberals have been saying from the beginning this was false, this wasn't true, no pressure was applied, and then we find out drip, drip, drip. Mm -hmm. The scandal continues. Trudeau's polling numbers drop, and they say, what? They keep reinventing it was Scott Bryson's fault. Right. A public inquiry would go a long way. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mr. Wilson would be able to answer the question as to why it was taped because she was getting increasingly worried. She right. says it herself. Fair I enough. didn't do this normally, and now I had to do this because I was getting pressured, and I was telling them stop it, and they okay. kept doing it. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Mark Miller, Nathan Cullen, and Aaron O'Toole in Toronto. Thanks for coming in and talking to uh, us about this.